Hey, what's going on? This is Alex from Motor Life, and today I'm going to be showing you how to assemble a motorized bicycle engine. So if you're ready, let's go ahead and get right into it. Yeah. All right, guys, welcome to the Brad Cave here. As you can see, there's always something crazy going on. Before we get started, make sure you go down, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and then check the timestamps because today I'm showing you how to assemble the piston, the cylinder, the jug, everything on a motorized bicycle engine kit. So this one I got from bicycleengines.com. So make sure you check out the link in the description. So if you are ready, let's go ahead and get right in and get this guy together. All right, so you just got your brand new engine from BicycleEngines.com. And after you've gone through the manual and made sure everything came in the box that's supposed to be, first thing you are going to notice is this engine actually ships out unassembled. And this is actually great news for you. That way it gives you a chance to look through everything, make sure there's no flaws or any burrs or anything. And it gives you a chance to know it's properly assembled the way it's supposed to be. So that's why we're here today. I'm going to show you how to get the piston on, the cylinder on, and the head on correctly without damaging the rings or anything. Anything, and that way you know everything is up to par. So if you're ready, let's go ahead and get this guy assembled. All right, for this assembly, all we're gonna need is a 13 millimeter socket, preferably a deep well, and then a little bit of engine oil to get the rings and everything to slide in properly. You can do this either on a bench, on a stand. You can even do this on the actual bike itself if you have enough room. Uh, wherever you're gonna be doing it, just make sure it's a place you don't mind getting scratched up. All right, so this one does look like it actually came with some upgraded wrist pin clips here. So make sure these don't fall in the engine or get lost because they are pretty small. <laughs> so pro tip here, before we get started, I'm going to take a little bit of a, a paper towel or shop rag or even a sock or something, anything, and make sure you kind of get it all down in here. That way you do, do not lose a clip because I'll tell you, if you lose a clip down in the actual engine itself, you will have a hard time getting it out. It may cause you to actually take apart the whole engine. So this is safe me several times in just a simple way to prevent a lot of heartache. So let's go ahead and get this thing ready to get the piston on. All right, so let's show you how to get these rings on the piston itself. Now, keep in mind, these rings are actually some of the most fragile parts of the entire kit. So start off making sure that you have everything uh, facing up. That little notch goes right around these pins here, as you can see. So make sure this notch is always facing up to go close around these pins. So perfect. All right. Now be careful. Like I said, these are extremely fragile, but once you have the edge around that edge, we're going to go ahead and kind of push around and then snap these, this first one into the first notch here. Can you see that first one's in the first notch? Now we're going to do a very similar motion here, being extremely careful to kind of push around and then boom. So that first one is in that second slot down there and you can see if you push the ring together it closes around that pin perfect all right so let's go ahead and get the upper one on so like i said kind of push there all the way around boom popped into place all right so these are installed so once you have these confident that they are installed correctly in the right place in the right direction they close everything closes up like that then we go ahead and get the pin in and get this guy on so let's go ahead and get it now, a, uh, another tip here so a lot of people go by the arrow i have seen this arrow actually come backwards on some engines not any that i've seen from bicycleengines.com but just let you know don't always go by that general rule of thumb the end the ring clip openings uh right there always go towards the intake side so that way it doesn't get caught on the exhaust side which is here because if this is backwards you're blowing up a ring so make sure you have it facing the right direction on this one the arrow is facing the exhaust side so first goes the needle bearings itself. Now these don't really go any certain direction. You just wanna make sure they are in and ready to go. All right, so we're ready to get the piston on here. You can see I have the wrist pin, everything ready to go. This fits in here like that, but through these two openings. So I like getting this started on one side, just a little bit, not all the way through, but just enough where you can see the little lip. That way when we get everything lined up here, you can see, you just kind of make sure you're good to go and push that through. Perfect. All right, so this next part, we're installing the clips. Now, this is a seriously important part of this process. You have to make sure they are in accurately so they don't slip out because if they slip out, they are going to ruin your entire cylinder wall of everything. So I'm going to show you an easy way that I know to get these clips in here. And all you need is a set of needle nose pliers. 
All right, so I do want to point out this actually came with some nice uh, G-style clips here. Here is the stock clip they usually come with, and you can see uh, the upgraded ones they send are a lot better because these do break and have a prone to break off right here at the tip. All right, so if everything lines up, you'll see the actual notch in the piston where you need to put that clip on that side. Uh, so a little tip here. I like actually taking the clip itself uh, this way with the opening right there. Uh, this way with the opening right there, you can see goes that way. I like twisting my hand around kind of all the way around this way, clipping it right there, making sure you don't drop it in the bottom of your engine. So I put my thumb right here and then you kind of just twist in place. Make sure everything lines up and we are in. And you will should hear it clip into place once it's all good to go. And you can actually turn it to check, check and make sure that it is in all the way, you should be able to turn it all the way around with no problem. So you see if it's installed properly, it will sit all the way down in there like that, as you can see in that little lip. All right, so you can see that's exactly how it should look in there. Now get ready and do the exact same thing on the other side, making sure not to drop that clip down in your, in your actual case itself. All right, double and triple check that those clips are in 100% on both sides. Now, once you're confident that they are fully in and ready to go, carefully remove your material. You prevented the clips from going in. This next step, we I like putting a little bit of engine oil on the inside of the actual cylinder. It's here. That way, I know the rings aren't going to scrape on the end if it's dry or super dry. Now, these actually come with a little bit of grease already installed, but it definitely doesn't hurt to put a little bit of engine oil in there so you know everything's nice and lubricated up. They don't need a whole lot here. Just a little bit will do. Get that all ready to go. I can make sure rings everything is all nice and oiled up now this will just burn off when you do fire it up for the first time all right so our cylinder is all oiled up and ready to go now this next part you got to make sure not to break or snag the actual piston rings themselves so with the intake face in the back and the exhaust face in the front we're going to get everything ready to go now make sure you do have your bottom uh, cylinder gaskets in place so you can see i got everything lined up and ready to go now i'm not on the piston yet so let me show you a couple tips here. So you're gonna be squeezing the actual piston rings themselves on either side. And you can see when I just do the top one here, it does actually close around that pen where that gap is. So if you do them both at the same time, you can see they both line up with that gap. So I'm going to slowly just push this down on the piston itself while holding both of the rings from both sides. I don't know if you can see, I have my fingers on both sides. Now I'm gonna do a tiny bit of jiggle. Now, if there's any resistance, just stop. You're going to actually break your piston rings, but it should slide on down if everything lines up perfectly here. So you can see, I do have a little bit of resistance. So I'm gonna make sure the rings are lined up in place. Now you can do this with the piston at top dead or bottom dead center. I like doing it at bottom dead. That way we both know everything's in place. All right, little jiggle, no resistance. That one's in line. First one's good to go. And here comes the second. While pushing from both sides, you can see she is good to go. So a little bit of jiggle, look for that resistance. If there's any resistance, back off, try again, because you'll snap those rings. But if everything looks good, from both sides while you're holding. Like I said, that little bit of jiggle gets you right down in place. So this guy sat all the way down and is good to go. So now we're gonna get the head on and then we are almost there, guys. All right, so here's a tip to screw in the actual cylinder studs themselves. You take a nut, get it on here, take another one, get them on, lock them into place, and then you can tighten that whole thing. All right, you see with those two nuts kind of locked in place, I could actually tighten the entire stud itself without destroying the thread. So nice pro tip, two nuts locked together will actually kind of make a nice area so you can tighten these. So I'm gonna go ahead and lock these two nuts on all four of these studs, get them all tightened down. That way I know these are in place before I put on this head. All right, so now we're about ready to get the head on. So we're going to be actually assembling the gasket on first. Make sure there's no obvious things going to create a uh, air leak or a compression leak on these. I like using a thin 
copper one. That way you know it really seals down. But also look from the top of the cylinder. Make sure there's no burrs or anything that's going to cause it to leak. This looks good. And so we're ready to go here. So I'm going to get this on. Sometimes you have to do a little bit of jiggling. But be careful. Like before, if there's any resistance, there's a good chance you're going to break something. So any resistance, back off. So that sat down and is good to go. All right, so one thing about these nice angle fire engines is the actual spark plug location is angled. You can see it's a little bit off to the side. Now you're gonna want these fins facing this way so you get as much cooling as possible. But with the actual spark plug in, I've done tests of either direction, this way or this way, and there's not a noticeable difference on a power decrease or increase either way. So you can actually put this head on this way or this way, depending on where your frame sits. So with the gasket in place, everything looks good on here. Nothing obvious is gonna cause a power failure. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this on flat, ready to go. All right, so we are ready to assemble this for the final time here, guys. So if you are confident that everything lines up and is good to go, let's go ahead and get these bolt, these nuts on here. All right, so time to get these finger tight. I like going in the corners. Now you go to the cross corner. That way you make sure everything is tight at the same time. Ideally, you want to tighten all four of these at the same time. That way there's no cross angling or anything. So make sure they are all tightened down to the same. So I'm going to get these finger tight to start off. All right, so I got all of these finger tight evenly all the way down so that head is pushed down. So we're going to go ahead and just go a little bit tighter. And I like going in a cross pattern once again. So you do the angles, get these down. Now I like doing these pretty snug right off the bat. Not 100% torqued down, but just make sure they're all evenly snug down, all four equally. All right, so now that you got them all kind of evenly spaced out, go ahead and give them one last little tighten here. Go a little bit tighter, but be careful. Do not strip those bolts. Get them all evenly cranked down. All right, so I don't usually actually go by the foot pounds themselves, but it actually is around five, I'd say about five foot pounds is all you need. All right, so the last step here, we're gonna get the spark plug down with the spark plug tool came with. Got that nice in place. All right, and we are good to go. All right, great job guys, so you did it. So you assembled your motorized bicycle engine. So all you have left to do is get this on a bike and get it on the road. So make sure you go down, hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up because this thing is going on an awesome bike next. So I will see you guys on the next one. Deuces.